Hey guys, I'm back with a new video. Thanks for watching. In this video, I want to show you this awesome 12 volt shower that I made that's super portable and works for so many different things. Right here is all you need to get this up and working. The actual shower that you build yourself, a portable power source, whether it be your car or a battery, and a privacy tent. Let me go ahead and show you how easy it is to set up. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is put hot water in this side of the bucket. Once it's filled up with your hot water, all you do is you plug it in on this side and plug it into your power source, flip the on switch, and you're good to go. High pressure, hot water to take a shower. Doing dishes while camping is super easy when you have pressurized water. This portable shower would be a great way to bathe your dog while camping. It's kind of cold outside, so I won't uh, torture him in the cold. You could totally wash off your bike. Compared to my old shower system that only held one gallon of water, had a really stiff hose, and you had to pump it a thousand times to make it work, this is awesome because it holds almost five gallons of water, it has an eight foot hose built up inside this bucket that is easily pulled out, and it runs off battery power, so there's no more pumping required to get your constant spray of water. So you get a high pressure stream of hot water for up to three and a half minutes, and that's just because you run out of five gallons of water. Okay, let's go ahead and set up the privacy tent. Okay, so now that I have the privacy tent set up, all I did was put the shower inside and I ran the extension cord through the front over to my power source. So you can see I have plenty of room to move around, to spin around fine. I got pockets inside the tent, so it's really nice. I can put some soap in there. And the hose is long enough that it can easily go way above my head. So basically you would just shut this, do your shower, get all clean, and then you're good. Okay, so let me go ahead and give you a little bit more information about this 12 volt shower. The flow rate that I've measured is one gallon for every 53 seconds. And if you have the water filled up to about this second line here, you get a run time of three and a half minutes until the water is completely emptied. The highest power draw that I've seen while using this is 26 watts. So over that three and a half minutes of 26 watts, you get about eight watt hours used. That's extremely power efficient. You shouldn't ever have to worry about running your battery down for using the shower, so I'd recommend this for anybody. Okay, I thought I'd show you the spray pattern up close. It's got some good pressure behind it. It goes actually pretty far. And it just sprays for a long time. I'm still loving this. I can't believe how much this sprays compared to my old-fashioned sprayer. Okay, so I'm pretty cold. My neighbors probably think I'm crazy out here, so let's go ahead and take the bucket inside. I'll give you a closer tour, and then I'll go through a whole build process so you guys can build this yourself. Okay guys, just wanted to show you the complete design and how simple this project is to build. I'll have all the parts in the description of the video, so if you want to do this, you can easily find everything that I used here to build this project yourself. So I needed a thing that would, that would store all my electronics and kind of keep things from getting splashed. And that's why I focused on this Plano 5 gallon bucket topper. So it's actually pretty low profile and it has the ability um, to be modified so that we can use it exactly for the shower. So that's one thing that you'll need to buy. As we open up this side here, you can see that the main brains of this whole thing is this on-demand 12 volt uh, RV pump. So basically what happens here is you have this pickup tube that's in the five gallon bucket. And as the pump is turned on, it sucks the water out of the bucket, pressurizes it to 35 PSI and puts it out through this eight foot hose to the sprayer. Now there's some basic electronics in here. You have a power port, so power comes in. You have a power switch and a fuse. And that's basically everything that's inside here. You clamp the hoses down and it's fairly simple. And I love how this just uh, closes in there. So it gives it a nice watertight, uh, kind of a splash proof um, area so you don't worry about your pump being uh, completely doused in water. On this side, you can see that there's this access port that you can remove out with a knife. So it allows you to have the sprayer and hose inside the bucket and you can easily pull it out and then use it. And then when you're done, put it back in. This Plano fish tackle box comes with these nice uh, inserts. And I think what you could do is easily cut these out so that you could fit your soap and shampoo and just set them right in there. So even with this, you have this closed, you have access to your shampoo conditioner, you take that out when you're about to shower, and then you have access to the water, the hose, and the sprayer. 
Okay, so the last thing we just need to talk about is powering it. So this runs off an external battery because there isn't room in here for a battery to be stored. Um, you'll need this external extension cord with an SAE plug on one side and then a 12 volt socket on the other. You just plug the SAE in here and then plug it into your 12 volt source and it's powered and good to go. Well, that about does it for the kind of the introduction and the overview for this. Uh, the next section will go into how to build it, and it's an extensive guide of every single step. It even talks about some of the tools and supplies you'll need. So hopefully you guys find that uh, next section helpful. Uh, anyway, this has been a great project. I really like the way it turned out. If you guys are going to build this, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I want to know if people built this and how it works for them. I uh, appreciate you guys once again. I love my supporters. And, you know, if you guys like this content and haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe because I got a lot of this stuff coming out. I'd love to make camping a more comfortable thing. I'm not rich enough to own an RV. So when I go camping, I want to have the comforts of, you know, of home. But when I'm camping, we'll go ahead and cue the, the build uh, process, the how to guide. We'll go ahead and start that right now. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I have my bucket topper. Uh, first thing I want to do is mount the pump. So let's go ahead and take the inserts out. And there's two sides to this. There's a side that has a cut line so you can remove the bottom and a side that does not have the cut line. We're going to install the pump on this side. Okay, so if you see here, there's an arrow showing which direction the water goes out. So this is your inlet side and this is your outlet side. So just pay attention to that as you mount it. Um, it has removable feet. I'm just going to take this one off and you'll see why. Okay, so this is how I want to mount my pump. I'm going to take a Sharpie and mark these three holes. I'm also going to mark the holes here so I know where to draw, uh, drill a hole out um, so that I could uh, get my 3 8 tubing going in and out there too as well. Okay, so you can see I have the three holes drilled and then I drilled this here and drilled another one here and elongated this so the tube could bend at a tighter angle. Um, these were 5 32nd drill bit holes and I used a 5 8 spade bit to drill these holes and I came in at an angle, which it worked fine. And so that's so that I can take my hose on my pump, put it on there and then it can feed through. But basically I just took 20 inches off a 10 foot section so I have about eight feet here and um, a little under two feet here. Okay, so I'm um, setting up the hose so it goes, has a, you know, the downward curve is going towards um, this way. And then I have the hose clamp just right past the edge. And then I have a socket, which is a quarter inch, and that's what these are. So I'd recommend using a socket. So go ahead and put the hose clamp on first then slide it on. Now, I wouldn't go too tight. You just want to go tight enough that you think water is not going to come out. You can always come back and tighten them. You don't want to break the barbs off. So what I want to do is feed both the hoses through their holes. Seems like it's going to work. So let's go ahead and uh, get the pump mounted through the screw holes that we did. Okay, you can see that there's plenty of room here. It doesn't kink the hose here. And then that, having that drop down there shouldn't be a problem either. So that uh, doesn't kink the hose there. And now I have the three uh, mounting points that I need to tighten down. Got everything tightened down. You can see my three screws, the hose clamps, uh, output shaft, and the input shaft. Okay, so my power access panel to power the whole thing, kind of want like right here. So I'm just kind of going to make a dot. Then I'll probably have the power switch over here. So I'm going to go ahead and use this three quarter inch spade bit to get it going. Just go nice and slow and you'll be fine. 
Okay, so I have uh, the hole big enough now. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark these four holes for the screws and drill them out. A 7 8 inch spade bit will make the hole for the middle uh, 5 30 seconds drill bit for this. Okay, so I have the power panel mounted. It's just got this nice cover. Um, this is SAE, so there you go. Now to finish up the wiring on the inside, I'm going to drill the hole for the switch. So I used the uh, 3 quarter inch uh, spade bit to drill this hole out. And uh, I just wanted it next to the edge so it was a little bit more reinforced as you push it. So yeah, three quarter inch. Um, I did have to just scrape it out just a teeny bit so that it would fit in. Uh, it slid in really nicely. It was really nice and snug, pushed it down. And then um, you have this little washer that goes on. Okay, so we're gonna be doing some wiring now. Um, you can use these uh, terminals that you just crimp and put right on these. Okay, I have all the wiring done. Just thought I'd show you how everything is wired up and connected. So you have your SAE port here where a positive line comes in to the first tab on the switch. So there are two silver tabs and one copper tab. The copper is for the negative and the two silvers are for the positive line. Your load is the middle switch, which goes to the pump and your input is this, um, this first one. So once again, you have positive coming into the first tab, comes out through the middle tab to the load and I have a small uh, 10 amp fuse in line here and continues on to the positive on the pump. So that's the entire positive line right there. This fuse is nice because it has this little uh, cover on it. Let's talk about the negative. So the negative comes in, ties to the negative point on the switch so it powers the LED. That's the only reason I have this negative tied in is for uh, the LED to be powered on. And then the negative comes out of that into the pump. So very simple. If you wanted it to be powered all the time, you just come positive to the positive of the pump, negative to the negative of the pump. I just wanted to have a power switch and a fuse for safety. You will want to make sure that the from here to here is just not too high because you can see it kind of hits um, the pump. So what I'll have to what I need to do is I shut this, and you shouldn't be opening this very frequently. But what you do is you just tuck this in, and it and it shuts fine positive is the exposed pin here and negative is the covered up pin and you can just look on the back side of this at the color of the wires and then my power switch um, I love this design because it's uh, enclosed in this area it kind of holds the sound in and uh, it seems to work well it keeps the water out so if water is to splash on top of this it shouldn't be uh, getting into the electronics okay so this is the whole unit here this is the pickup tube I need a way to keep it straight and uh, came up with this. So this is just a piece of half inch PVC with a coupler that I cut. So if it's hitting the bottom, it still can get water up through the bottom. This will keep that pipe straight. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slip this on and I can slide this up and down to adjust the height of the bucket. I just want this resting right on the bottom and I need it to be straight. So what I'm gonna do is cut this here and then I'm gonna use a little bit of petroleum jelly to slide this in. It is, It will fit, but it just gets a little bit uh, stuck. So I can just see the jokes now, but anyway, I'm going to loop this up and slide this down. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and give you some final dimensions on the intake tube. So from the barb all the way to the end is probably a little over 12 inches. I can see it in there so uh, a little over 12 inches long um, the piece of half inch PVC is about nine inches long plus the coupler that has about an inch taken out of it so let's go ahead and put some on here see how this works Yep. Okay, it's right there. So this will go like this to the bottom of the bucket. And I may need to adjust it. I might have to take some more off, but uh, let's see how that works. 
Okay, one recommendation. Um, you can see I had this longer earlier. Uh, it was about an inch long. I've now cut that down to about a quarter inch. I also took out a notch right here so that uh, it could pick up water um, if this happened to uh, be flush along the bottom. So I'd recommend uh, starting with something like this. Okay, I thought I'd just do a quick shot of what the pickup tube looks like when it's on the bottom of the bucket. With the modification I made to the coupler, it picks up all the water except for about a quarter inch of water. So pretty efficient and you won't have any issue uh, wasting any water at the bottom of the bucket. Okay, so next step is to take the 8 foot uh, 3 8 tubing and we're going to hook it up to the kitchen sprayer we bought. So I took the kitchen sprayer and I cut off the most of the hose. Now the reason I did that is this is way too stiff. Um, it hardly bends. Um, it's very rigid and I want something that's super flexible and this is much more flexible. So I'm just going to use mostly this. I bought this uh, 3 8 splitter at Home Depot. Um, so what it, I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in this side. Um, and then this is just a little bit smaller, which is probably beneficial. I'm just going to take a lighter and slightly heat it up. And then I'm going to put this in there and uh, should get a really good seal. I'm hoping to not have to use any clamps. So it'll just be a smooth transition from this tube to this tube. The harder this is to go on, the better, because then I won't have to have a clamp for it. So this is a good sign that it's so hard to get on. That was a lot of work, but it's on there. Now for the easier side. It's going to be hard, but nothing like the other side was. There you go. It's on there. So we'll see if it leaks. But now that'll give us the ability to spray. Okay, so I have everything installed. Um, I think what I'm going to do is cut out this interior where they say you can cut along the edge to remove it. And that'll allow me to grab the hose. And when I'm not using it, um, everything will store inside the whole entire bucket. When I want to use the shower, I pull the hose out, fill it with water and uh, power it up and it'll work. And then when the water's gone or when I'm done, pour the water out and put the hose back in. Okay, so I just removed this sticker here so you can uh, see better inside. Um, so yeah, we can see that I uh, cut along this with a utility knife. There's like a score line that you can cut out. Um, and now once that's removed, I can easily access uh, my sprayer handle. So um, say you wanna take a shower, you just go ahead and pull it out, all eight feet of it just all comes out. Um, now that the hose is out, you'll want to mix some hot water. So you boil as much hot water as you can, and then you mix it with cold water and you end up getting a good warm mixture. Uh, just pour it directly into the hole here. Um, plug in your power source and uh, start your shower. Now once your shower is done, we're going to have to go ahead and put uh, the sprayer back in. Okay, so let's go ahead and put the sprayer back in. You just kind of start tucking it back in. The trick is to just make sure that it starts coiling in the bottom there. You can see it just kind of rolls right up, um, just like a normal garden hose. And it goes in pretty quickly. Now, if you're gonna be uh, finished with this for a long time, I'd suggest uh, leaving the lid open so that it can air out and dry properly. If you're gonna be using it in like the next day or so, it's probably okay just to leave this shut. Um, it won't get mildewy or moldy inside. But like I said, if you really wanna just let this sit for a while um, and let it air out and dry completely, that would be wise so you don't get mold in here. One other thing I failed to mention is if you do have leftover water inside, all you have to do is tip it um, on its side and the water will come out through here. So uh, you can get most of the water out uh, through the pump any leftover water, just dump out and it'll come out through here. And then um, the rest you can just air dry uh, as the lids open. Okay, I wanna talk about how I plan to power this 12 volt shower. So the first thing I'll show you is this extension cable that I purchased off Amazon. This has an SAE end on one end and then a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter adapter on the other end. 
So let me go ahead and show you how I hook that up. Okay, so now it's hooked up. You have the SAE end plugged into the shower on this side and the other end on my portable battery box. So you want this distance to be long enough. I think 10 feet is plenty, just so that you don't have any issues with water and electricity. No one's gonna get hurt. And this will be by itself uh, away from your power source. Um, so all you have to do is pour it up with water. Um, and then when you turn it on, the, the pump itself will prime and shut off. But because there's no water in here, the pump will run for a while. But let me just go ahead and show you how the pump sounds. So very quiet pump. I think it helps to have this lid on here to keep the sound down. And uh, I actually like how quiet that is. So when you're planning to power this uh, 12 volt shower, you could really run it off any 12 volt source. Uh, you could use a portable uh, solar generator like this all powers uh, portable so solar generator. You could use a goal zero uh, Yeti. You could use a Jackery or any other thing that has 12 volts and a 12 volt socket and uh, you can power it. Um, I'm currently running it off my DIY lithium iron phosphate battery box. You could even run it off your vehicle. You just set your privacy tent near your vehicle uh, and use the extension cord to power off a 12 volt socket within your vehicle. The possibilities of running this are endless and it's super efficient. It hardly uses any power, so you can really use any size battery and be okay. Um, of course, it'd be nice to not have to think about your battery running out, so these larger options are great as well. Okay, we'll start with the tools I used on this project, at least most of the tools. Um, I used this ratchet with a quarter inch uh, socket and a 1132 inch socket. So this was for the barb hose clamps and this was for the number eight uh, nylon nuts. Next, you could use an X-Acto knife or a utility knife. Um, either of them will work. I did find the utility knife to be a little bit more useful and safer to use. For drilling all the holes, I used this 5 30 seconds um, drill bit. This was for all the screw holes. For the hose to go through um, the container, I used a 5 8 spade bit. For the power switch, I used a 3 quarter inch spade bit. And for the SAE adapter, I used a 7 8 inch spade bit. Any household drill um, will work really well with those spade bits and drill bits. So you'll need one of those to drill out all the holes. Okay, so this is everything you'll need to purchase at Home Depot. You'll need at least a foot of half inch PVC and also a half inch coupler to go on the end that you'll need to modify. You'll need two of these hose clamps. Um, I'll have all the names of these in the description of the video. You'll need a hose barb that's a splicer and it's uh, 3 8 inch on both sides. You'll need three eight by 32 by three quarter inch. You'll need three of these. You'll need three of these washers that go with it. And then also three of these nylon nuts to uh, lock it down. You'll need four of these. These are the eight by 32 half inch round head. These are what screw down the uh, SAE connector to the lid and you'll wanna use uh, the nylon nuts as well. So I would suggest, instead of these nuts, cause they don't lock on, so I would suggest using additional four uh, nylon nuts. You'll also need some petroleum jelly um, or Vaseline or anything like that so that you can thread the uh, 3 8 tube through that half inch PVC. Okay, so here's the main things you'll have to purchase. You'll need a five gallon bucket. You'll need one of these Plano uh, five gallon bucket storage containers. You'll need this SAE port. You'll need this power switch. You'll need the Seaflow on-demand 12 volt pump. So you'll just have to have a basic knowledge of sol soldering or just wiring it up, uh, heat shrink, things like that. Not very hard. I did add this fuse. I already had this fuse sitting around. Um, there's the two hose clamps that you'll need and Here's the tubing. So looking up close, you'll need 10 feet of this 3 8 reinforced uh, vinyl tubing. This is somewhat flexible, um, especially when it's warm. And uh, this is the stuff you'll want to use. It can hold up 225 PSI. It's durable, it's reinforced, it doesn't kink. Like, I mean, look how tight I'm bending that. It doesn't kink at all. So this is what you're gonna want to use. You'll need at least 10 feet of it. I'll have this in, on a, in a link on Amazon as well. You'll want to purchase uh, some sort of power cable so you can run it off a car outlet or a portable battery. Uh, 10 feet I think is just enough. 
Looking at the final things you'll need is just a kitchen sprayer of your choice. I liked this one because it was so small and uh, cheap. Uh, it doesn't leak at all and it uh, just works really well. I'll have this linked in the description. Um, there's the barb uh, fitting that you'll need and everything just folds up in there nicely and uh, just shuts nice. You can even store the power cable in there. It won't fall through. Just, just like that. And everything's contained in there. The only thing you need to do is pour the water in and hook up power. Okay, one little tip right before ending the video. Um, as you see, I did put a clamp here, um, an additional one, just like the ones inside. This is just a third one. I put it here because when I started using hot water, this actually started popping off and leaking. So I would suggest securing this down. Uh, I don't see that there's a way that um, this would cut or hurt anybody. It's far enough away from the handle itself. And there's not really anything protruding off of this. The last thing I would recommend is do not store this in freezing temperatures. Um, the pump um, could have the potential of having frozen water and also this here could uh, cause damage to the sprayer if it was frozen. So just make sure if you're going to store this in a winter environment, completely take all the water out of it and then you won't end up having any damage to your sprayer or to the pump when you come back next spring and want to use it for camping. It's not broken. Thanks for watching the channel guys. Really appreciate all my supporters. Hope you guys build it. Let me know in the comments once again if you end up doing something or you know using this idea for a project of your own. Have a great day. We'll see you later.